go. We're just trying to make the left side look like the right side on these identities. So we've got 1 plus sine B over cosine B. The goal is to make these look like your Pythagorean identities. So we need to have stuff that's squared in order to use the Pythagorean identities. Okay? You cannot replace this with anything unless it's squared. So just a reminder that cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. And so what would be really nice to have is a cosine squared beta in the denominator. So then we could factor and cancel stuff. So what I want to get is a squared term right here. So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by cosine beta. So in the top we have cosine beta times 1 plus sine beta. And now in the bottom we have cosine times cosine so that gives me cosine squared beta. Okay, I'm trying to get to where I have some signs in the denominator. So now I can replace this cosine squared. All right, once you get a Pythagorean identity, then look to replace it. So cosine squared beta is equal to 1 minus sine squared. Okay, so I've got my numerator here, cosine beta. 1 plus sine beta. And now in the denominator, I'm going to replace cosine squared beta with 1 minus sine squared beta. So I had to make it something squared first, then I could replace it with the identity. So now this is really cool because I can factor it. That's just a difference of squares right there. And I can make it cancel with this guy right here. So now I have cosine beta. 1 plus sine beta. And in the denominator, again, difference of squares, this guy factors into two sets of parentheses. 1 plus sine beta times 1 minus sine beta. And now this cancels 1 plus sine beta with 1 plus sine beta. And I get exactly what I was trying to get on the right-hand side. It's magical how that works out. All right, let's try another one. All right, so because these over here are secants and cosecants, I don't want to use tangents because of what I'm trying to get to. So I'm going to rewrite tangent beta, just this guy right here, as sine over cosine. All right? So you guys know tangents are sine over cosine, right? So I'm going to start with that. Sine beta over cosine beta plus 1. And then I'm going to change this tangent. Same thing. Sine beta over cosine beta plus 1. Yeah, minus 1. Okay, so now we got to think about what we're trying to get. I'm trying to get a secant right here. Secant is 1 over cosine, right? So what I'd like to have right here is 1 over cosine, which means I need to cancel that sine beta that's in the numerator. So I could actually multiply by 1 over sine beta. That would cancel these and give me 1 over cosine, which is what we're trying to get, right? Now, I'm allowed to do this only if I also do it in the denominator. So I'm also going to multiply by 1 over sine beta down here. This is legal because you're really multiplying by 1. So what happens when I multiply this to this is these signs cancel and I get 1 over cosine beta. Plus. And I have to distribute this to the 1 right here, which is then 1 over sine beta. And in the denominator here, what's going to cancel? Uh, yep, so I get another 1 over cosine beta minus 
Now I'm going to distribute this times 1. So that's just 1 over sine beta. Okay, this is starting to look like what we want, right? This guy right here is equal to secant theta plus this guy right here is equal to cosecant beta. And same on the bottom, we have another secant beta minus a cosecant beta. And we got what we're trying to get, okay? So this one's a little harder. You've got to think about what should I multiply by to cancel what I need to cancel in order to get what I need to get. So you kind of have to look ahead here, which is challenging. This one looks hard, but it's actually it's actually not that bad. Okay. Alrighty. So the first thing you want to do is foil this out. So this is the same as x sine theta plus y cosine theta times itself. So I'm just going to write it twice since I'm squaring it. And I'm going to do the same thing where I'm going to write this one twice as well. I should have written smaller. x cosine theta minus y sine theta. And I'm multiplying it times itself. So I'm going to foil out the first set of parentheses and I'm going to foil out the second set of parentheses. So when I multiply this times this, what do we get? What do you think, Peyton? Uh huh. Right here? No, you're squaring the exact same thing. And then we will end up getting a positive when we multiply the negative times the negative. But you are squaring the same uh, binomial right there. Okay. So, Colin, what do I get when I multiply x sine theta times x sine theta? Yep. x squared. Close. Sine squared theta. Yep. So the x and the x multiply and the sine and sine multiply. All right. Now we're going to multiply our outsides together right here. And we get plus x, y, sine theta, cosine theta. And don't worry, a lot of stuff will cancel out here. Okay, then I'm going to multiply this inside piece together, which is plus x, y, same thing, sine theta, cosine theta. And you can put those in either order, but I'd probably put the variables in the front, okay? And now I have plus, now I'm going to multiply the last part times the last part. And so, Fabio, what do you think we get when we multiply this times this? Yep. All right, now I still have to foil out all of these two. So now I'm going to multiply the first times the first. So, Peyton B., what do you think we get when we multiply this times this? Yeah. Good. Now i got to multiply the first thing times the last thing. So this times this. Uh, ben, what do you think we get when we multiply this times this? Yep. And we have another thing in the middle that's exactly the same, right? Minus another one. X, Y, cosine theta, sine theta. And then we multiply the last term times the last term. A negative times a negative is a positive. Y times Y is Y squared. Sine squared theta. All right. If you can foil them out correctly, the rest of this is really easy because a lot of stuff cancels. So I have plus XY sine cosine minus XY sine cosine. And this guy right here, plus XY sine cosine minus XY sine cosine. Okay. So now we actually have where we can factor out an x squared just from these two pieces right here. So I can take out an x squared and put in parentheses sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. And over here I can do the same thing where I factor out a y squared. So I have plus and then a y squared comes out of this one and I have cosine squared theta 
plus sine squared theta. What is this whole thing equal to? One. What is this whole thing equal to? One. So x squared times one is x squared. Y squared times one is y squared. And that's what we were trying to get on the other side. Yay. That was fun. All right, some triangle inequalities. I think we did this at the beginning of the year. So uh, just a little review. If a squared plus b squared equals c squared, what kind of triangle is that? Triangle. Good. Anybody remember which one's obtuse? Yes. If c squared is bigger than the rest of this, right, this side is bigger, then it is obtuse. And if c squared is smaller, it is acute. All right. And do you guys know how to check all of these? Do I need to do any of these for you? Yes, yes. Like part C. We'll just do one of these. Which one has to be the C side on this one? All right. I would do that first. 15 squared, question mark, 12 squared plus 6 squared. So we have 225, question mark, 144 plus 36. So is 225 greater than that sum right there or less than that sum? We would add those together and we get 180. And so 225 is greater than 180. So this is an obtuse triangle, which you can tell by looking at it in this picture. But if they don't give you the picture, you'd have to check it. Okay.